This week on Tabletop Witchcraft, we're going to build this structure, which is called an Imperial Box, where I'm sure you've all seen a rendition of this on movies like The Gladiator, where the Emperor would give a thumbs up or thumbs down at the end of every gladiatorial fight. Turn it around, and it can be used as a stage in any town square for plays or public announcements. This week on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there, and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week, I want to do something a little bit different with respect to uh, stone texturing and color. A lot of the builds I've made in the past have your standard gray stone color that you roll real heavy with aluminum foil. This week, we're gonna roll this foam light with a texture roller that I made with just sand, and we're gonna go with a color pattern here called travertine, which is a stone that uh, most people are familiar with, the Colosseum. That's what that was made out of. So totally different color pattern um, and stone texture. Anything that I can make removable on this, I did, like this front flag and the awning. So depending on where this build is or how you're using it, you can remove those if you'd like. So let's go grab some supplies and let's get crafting. All right, so I thought this would be a really fun build here. Um, basically, we're going to be making, um, you know, an area where an emperor or a king is going to stand to watch, uh, you know, some gladiatorial games or some jousting, uh, or it can be turned around um, and used on the back side of the build um, to act as a uh, stage. So basically, all of this is is a rectangular piece for the body of this imperial box. And using the plan, we're just going to mark out these little sections here that are just going to add a little bit more detail around the outside um, of this structure. Now at times, the build itself can get a little bit tricky. There's lots of little cuts on it. Um, just to try and get the pillars to fit in in the right place. But, you know, you watch the uh, tutorial here, just, you know, take it slow, and um, all these cuts you'll be able to make uh, with no issue. You can see this piece that I'm stenciling out right here. I'm going to try and make this as one continuous cut on the Proxon. And it is doable with an Alpha knife. Um, you just got to take your time. Now this is the start of each pillar. And um, you know, using the plans here, basically, you know, it's just tapering this uh, square block at the top. Now for all these uh, pillar sections, you're gonna wanna um, double them, obviously. We got a pillar on each side of this imperial box. And this dimension right here is going to um, obviously be the, the spire portion of that. Now, not all the time is the Proxon the best tool to use. Um, you know, here, obviously, really the Ulfa knife is the better tool um, to make these cuts. And you can even use the Ulfa knife for this cut right here. Um, you know, I want to give it a shot with the Proxon, and it worked, uh, worked pretty well. Now, whether you're using the Proxon or if you're just going to use, you know, an X-Acto or an Alpha knife, um, don't stress out too much if the cut isn't exactly on that line, um, because we're going to go ahead and texture um, this piece here uh, with some aluminum foil and with a texturing tool that I use in probably almost all of my builds. This piece right here, and it will really straighten out and flatten any, you know, really off um, pieces that are a little, I guess, wavy on that column. You know, you can press harder on the spots that are sticking up more and depress that foam so that you don't have much of it, that much of it showing, any errors that you might have. Now placing this stencil on the piece that we cut out earlier, mark the four corners of the center square. It should look something like that. And again, um, I'm using here the X-Acto um, just to cut that out. 
Now, be careful with that one little piece there sticking out on the corner. Um, that's a little fragile at the moment, but as you can see, once we stick the pillars in and we glue it in place, um, that'll uh, um, strengthen right up. Now that mark there uh, is a section that we're gonna cut out. That's actually the bottom of the Imperial box. And all I'm doing is just marking out a little tiny cut there for the top for the pillar to come out through. And because I made these pillars tapered towards the top, that's what kind of makes this a little bit tricky um, with all these angle um, pieces here and angle marks that I'm putting on. If you were to go ahead and just put you know, straight um, pillars on here, it would make this build a lot easier. So you just keep that in mind, um, you know, if you're stressing out too much about all these weird looking cuts here, just put straight pillars on and you'll be all set. And you can see I didn't connect those lines all the way because we're actually going to place on this um, the stencil for the base of the column um, to mark out um, really truly where we're going to be cutting at the base. You know, I'll be honest, I was a little nervous myself when I first started this, you know, with respect to these columns fitting in um, to this uh, base structure. Uh, and it really did fit in real nice and snug and, and looks really nice um, now that it's finished. I use the alpha here. And again, when you're cutting this, just press in and make little um, movements back and forth. Um, you don't want to like press really hard and pull it because you'll once the alpha knife catches and you start to make that cut, you know you'll cut right through this whole thing. And just peel away at it like you can see there until you finally um, have that piece pop out. And there's always a way to hide, you know, any mistakes that you might have. Um, you know, if you make a cut like this piece right here a little bit too wide or the angle is not just right, you can fill that with uh, green stuff or, you know, another type of uh, media like that to, um, to hide your mistake. All right, so your base should look something like that. And to secure these uh, pillars, you'll see this in quite a few of my builds. I like to use uh, barbecue skewers or toothpicks. Obviously here, barbecue skewer is the way to go because of the length. And that's a little bit of uh, Eileen's tacky glue. I pre-tap that hole and then it'll um, fit in there nice with the uh, Eileen's on it. And again, just to keep me moving, I could have left it with just the Eileen's, but a little bit of hot glue will allow me to keep moving on the build. I'll put a link above to uh, the foam texture rollers that uh, I've made. I did a video on these, um, talking about them and how to make them. And I was going for um, a different type of stone here. Um, typically, like um, back in the, the Roman era, um, this type of stone, like the Colosseum was made out of a stone called travertine. So that's the... Um, the texturing that I was going for, and you'll see here in a little bit the color as well. And here, all I'm doing is marking out the grid work, you know, as usual. And if you don't play with a grid, obviously leave this, uh, this section out. Okay, so this was fun to try and figure out. This is going to be like a little pergola uh, shade structure over the top of the Imperial box. Uh, now I'm definitely using toothpicks. Uh, these are quarter inch by quarter inch um, pieces of foam. And I'm just going to run a toothpick right up the middle. Just take your time back and forth um, and you'll be able to get it in there. You might have a little tear here or there. Again, don't worry about that. You won't even notice it uh, once these are all painted up. So basically we were just making a bunch of uh, different logs out of this uh, foam. 
and I'm using this clay sculpting tool just to add some uh, wood grain to it. All right, so I wanted a um, cool looking archway um, to where the king or the emperor would be um, standing or address the people. I actually found this design online. There was some artist that did a, um, a rendition of an imperial box, and that's uh, where I got the idea for all this from. So uh, as you can see, there's some angle cuts here. Again, if you want to make the build a little bit easier, you know, don't worry about these little cuts, but they're not hard to make with a sharp knife. So once all that's glued together, uh, we're going to stick the pillars on to the, uh, the top here with a little bit of hot glue. And I contemplated making this um, piece as well as the pergola removable, um, but at the end I decided just to make it you know, one solid piece on the build. Um, I did want the playability of this feature, um, you know, of this piece, um, not to be an issue moving miniatures around. Um, so what I ended up doing was the awnings that are going to go over this, I made those removable, which is a really cool feature because you can change the colors of those out um, depending on the town or the city that you might be playing in. And it made it a lot easier, as you can see, um, keeping a little bit of the uh, toothpick sticking out there to help secure and pin these in place. It made it a lot easier just making the build. So that definitely did help uh, with my decision to make this a permanent piece. And then just notch out a little section on the uh, horizontal piece there for the uh, cross log there to, to fit into and duplicate that for the rear side as well. And now that we have, you know, all of these pieces of wood, even the long ones have a barbecue skewer through them, they're a little bit more flexible now. We don't have to worry about them breaking. So as you can see, I just pulled it apart there to insert that one section. Now this is some granny grating. Um, all the items that I use you can find in the uh, description below um, to where you can pick them up on Amazon. So all those links will be down there. And basically I'm just cutting this to fit. I love working with granny grating. Cuts real easy. We'll lay that in at an angular pattern there and then cover the edges up with some foam. And now the edges of the top section here just looked a little too square to me so I just uh, coated them in another thin layer of XPS just for a little bit more detail, something for the uh, dry brush to pick up. And now here you can see the barbecue skewer sticking out the end of the foam. So all I did was mix up a little bit of green stuff, plug the hole, and then texture that uh, piece there uh, with a clay sculpting tool. And once it's painted, um, you'll never even know that there was a hole there. Okay, so we're going with some Apple Barrel Territorial Beige. So we're going to do an interesting uh, paint job on this here. Um, we're going to do some wet blending um, with this piece. So once you have that territorial beige on there, you're going to grab some folk art linen or a light tan color and just blotch it on there. It's kind of like maybe a little bit of a marbly look, but it's, I'm going for what's called travertine. And as long as the layer that you're working on, the base layer is still um, wet, you can really get a decent blend on these. So we're gonna highlight this again here in just a second with a lighter color. And we're gonna make sure it's over the linen, which is um, will be the wet portion of paint at that point. And it doesn't have to be completely blended together. Once the colors, you know, dry, things sort of kinda come together on their own a little bit. And you know, if you end up messing up here, again, don't stress out, just uh, just repaint it, not a big deal. So now I'm going with a dark brown for the pergola and highlighting it there with the beige color. Now what I did here, I made my own wash. 
It's uh, these items here in the background, some matte medium, a few drops of flow aid, some burnt umber, water, and really I just wanted to like lightly coat this whole thing to blend all these colors together a little bit at this point. Darken up the hatch work on that granny grating. Uh, I wanted it to look like you know the stone was etched out out of one solid block and that was just some brown wash from Vallejo. Now I love this uh, dry brush here it's just a makeup brush um, but it works really well. I've been in the search for a really decent dry brush for a long time and I'm really starting to like this one here and it's pretty cheap. It was only a couple of bucks on Amazon. And I'm using the same color to edge highlight the um, or dry brush um, the wood as well. Now that piece of paper there, I use that as a stencil to um, get the dimensions of the awning that I want for over the pergola. So we cut the fabric out to length and here all this is is some chipboard that I drilled a little hole into and stuck some toothpicks in. Poked a uh, hole there in each corner, took like a little rivet hole and then I'm painting it up a copper color. I ended up going back and repainting this a bronze color. You'll see it'll match the pieces here on the front. But, you know, I mean, that looks good too. And then I used a, a black wash on it. Then I went back and repainted it in this color here. Now this is the same as the uh, piece before with the toothpicks, only here I put some split rings to make little hooks because we're going to put a flag here for the town or the city um, where this is going to uh, be used in. And I thought this was a pretty cool looking uh, eagle. So I just decided to cut out some black fabric and make my uh, tapestry, I guess, out of some gold paint and a little uh, eagle that I found online. So this was a really fun build. It's a little intricate, but it's a small enough build where you can take plenty of time on all these little cuts to make sure that everything lines up just right. I gotta be honest, I was a little nervous when I first started this because all of the pillars here, here, they're all tapered a little bit and they weren't exactly straight when I cut them out. But when you roll them with the texture roller, uh, it really does a great job straightening them out and the little bit of variation in the pillar um, actually looks really awesome when it's complete. As I mentioned earlier, on the back here, um, you'll notice there's no stairs. You go ahead and make any type of stairs you want for this. You know, you can have some stairs that flare out. You can throw a ladder on the back. You know, if this is going to be used as some type of box out, um, like in the, the fields or the hill somewhere where there's a jousting tournament, you can just throw a ladder on there. Um, so go ahead and, um, you know, however you want to fill that piece out, go ahead. I have my own little ideas for this, which you'll find out in the not so distant future. So if you enjoyed the video, please remember, go ahead and like, subscribe, head on over to Patreon, check that out. I've got some really cool tiers over there where I've got some Patreon only content, Tabletop Witchcrafts to come in the private Facebook page where you can share your artwork and have access to me and everybody else on Patreon as well as the contractor tier, where I'll email you all the plans directly on the day of release of the video. So, until next time, I'll see you around.